when it comes to self-doubt and to how we can torture ourselves with our thoughts, boy, have I lived that nightmare. The habit of worrying spins out of control. And your body's in a state of alert, just as if a car almost hit you. So now your brain is a problem, because what's your brain's job? It's designed to protect you. Your mind gets really scared because your body is now doing something okay. that normally only happens when there's danger. But the problem, <laughs> but there's no danger. Okay, this is a really cool little trick to bring out the most powerful side of you. Right before you're about to do something, take a test, run a race, public speaking, a business negotiation, ask somebody to marry you, whatever it may be that gets your heart racing, just do this. I literally have struggled with anxiety my entire life. And anxiety for this conversation, the way I define it, is it is the habit of worrying mm. spiraled out of control. You know, you may say that you are a worrier. That's not true. You have a habit of worrying. A habit is a pattern of behavior or thinking that you repeat without realizing it. So anxiety happens when that pattern of worrying about things spirals out of control, and now it starts to marry and manifest itself with physical sensations too. Mm -hmm. That's all that it is. I know that I say that's all that it is. <laughs> Me personally, I struggled with anxiety, uh, I think my entire life. It became quite acute when I was in my late teens and early 20s. I became medicated in the middle of law school. I took Zoloft for two decades. When our first daughter was born, who is now 17, the postpartum depression, and the cascading panic was so terrible that not only was I medicated and couldn't breastfeed, but I couldn't be left alone with her. Wow. So when I say you can cure yourself of anxiety, I don't say that lightly. Mm. Four years ago, after I had been using the five second rule to change my behavior, how I spoke to my husband, how I negotiate in business meetings, how I conduct sales, the kind of parent that I am, my health habits, my eating habits, curbing the drinking, um, I thought, I wonder if I can use this five, four, three, two, one thing to get control of my thought patterns. Mm. Not my behavior patterns, my thought patterns. Yes, you can. Wow. So we're gonna, we're gonna build this conversation because I wanna start with something we can all uh, relate to and that is how do you stop worrying and how do you stop listening to self-doubt? This is how you're gonna do it. So all day long, you're going to have moments where your thoughts drift. And I use that word on purpose because for me, there is a physical sensation when you start to use the five second rule and you start to wake up, mm. not only on time in the morning, but you wake up to your life and the opportunities in your life. There's, your thoughts drift. Like you'll just be hanging out with your friends and then suddenly you're like, I'm not sure that that person likes me anymore. <laughs> you know, I haven't heard from my kids lately. I wonder if they're dead or, you know, oh, you know, it's like check, like you just start worrying about stuff. Mm. Why? Because it's a habit. Because when you're not paying attention, your brain shifts from you being a decision maker and paying attention to you just kind of spinning things on autopilot. And one of your habits is worrying. The second you wake up and you notice holy cow, I'm talking some negative garbage to myself right now. Mm. Five, four, three, two, one. You've just shifted the part of the brain that you're using. You've shifted from the basal ganglia, which is where your habit loops are spinning, and you've awakened your prefrontal cortex. You've also interrupted that pattern. Now what you're going to do, because your mind is actually ready to receive a different thought because of the counting, now you can put in an anchor thought. Like if you have a mantra, if you've got a vision about the way that your business is gonna turn out in five years, if you just have a thought that makes you really happy and proud, insert that. Now, why does this work? It works because of the counting. And I'm not kidding. We know, based on research, that positive thinking alone, not effective. In some instances, trying to force yourself to think positive can actually make the worries worse. Why? Well, the reason why is because it's really hard to just change the channel. What we have to do first is basically interrupt it and turn off the TV and then turn it back on with the prefrontal cortex awakened. So the counting is essential. And so you can start using this today. You catch yourself talking garbage to yourself, because we all know if I were to put a speaker on your head and broadcast, you would be <laughs> sitting here in the audience, you'd be in an insane asylum because the crap that you say to yourself is insane. 
And the problem is we listen to it. You'll be, you'll be in a sales meeting and you'll be undermining yourself. They're not gonna buy, oh my gosh, I'm in trouble. You're not even present. Five, four, three, two, one, switch it back. Get back to that vision that you have about toasting your success or this customer being really happy or you being proud of yourself. Mm. Whatever that vision may be, you can control your thoughts. And this is not just us talking about it. This is a tool that you can use. So let's take it a step further. So worrying, if you let it go unchecked, what will happen is you will get used to worrying. You will get used to living in a state where you're slightly agitated all the time. Let me talk a little bit about agitation. So what we know based on research is that physically, in your body, so physiologically, being excited is the exact same thing as being afraid. Let me say that again, because it is so important. In your body, being excited is the exact same thing as being afraid. Your body doesn't know the damn difference. Your heart your races, heart rate, your armpits right. sweat, you're like, you know, you may get tight in your throat. You may, your cheeks may get pink like my do when I get excited. The only difference between excitement and fear is what your brain says. And the problem is if you have a habit of worrying, guess what you're gonna tell yourself is going on? That you're, that you're like freaking out that you're not excited, that something must be wrong. Oh gosh, why would you say something's wrong? Because you got a habit of saying that all the time. Even as I became a, a speaker for a living or I'd be on CNN, when I first started doing it, I would be freaking out backstage. But even, even though, like, you know, just, a couple, just last week, he's standing backstage, about to go on, 8,000 people, heart races, armpit sweat, mm. you know, my hands get clammy. I'm not nervous though, not at all, I'm excited. And so I developed this technique and research uh, out of Harvard, not based on my technique, but something very similar, proves that if you basically, right before you're about to do something, take a test, run a race, public speaking, a business negotiation, ask somebody to marry you, whatever it may be that gets your heart racing, just do this, go, I'm excited. I'm excited to give that speech. I'm excited to ask him or her. I'm excited to do this race. I'm excited. Because what happens is you give your brain context so your brain doesn't escalate the stuff going on mm. in your body. Your brain's not worried. Make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can combine this with the five second rule. So we know how to do worrying. You, ca you catch your thoughts drift. Five, four, three, two, one, anchor thought. If you start to feel your heart racing, five, four, three, two, one, to awaken the prefrontal cortex and then start going, I'm really excited to do this. I'm really excited to do this. Another technique that you can use is ask, um, I think they call it interrog interrogatory questions, mm. where instead of giving yourself a pep talk, say, well, why am I ready to do this? Why am I ready? Because that'll force you to answer the question, which then convinces you. Mm. So why am I ready to close the sale? Why am I ready to give this speech? Why am I ready? So those are two strategies that you can use backed by science that are proven to actually make your performance be much better. Now let's take it a step further to anxiety. So anxiety is what happens when the habit of worrying spins out of control, your body gets really agitated, and then you allow your mind to escalate it mm. into a full-blown panic attack. So for those of you that have not had the pleasure of having a panic attack, <laughs> Let me um, explain what it's like. So have you ever been in your car and you're driving down the road and you go to change lanes and all of a sudden there's like, oh my God, there's a car right there, yeah. right? And you swerve a little bit and then your heart's like, Brrr! and you may sweat a little bit and, and you grip the wheel really tight and you're super locked in on, on the road ahead of you. Mm. But then that car pulls away and the, the, the near miss scenario passes and your mind starts going, okay, you're all right now. Right. You're all right now. That's it. That's all, that's what a panic attack is, only it happens while you're standing in front of your coffee pot. <laughs> Seriously, you have that same, oh my God, what behind that? And your heart's racing and, and the problem for your brain is that your brain can't look around and say, holy cow, we almost got hit by a car. Right. Your brain's saying, what the hell is wrong with her? She's making coffee and she's freaking out. And so now your brain has a problem because what's your brain's job? It's designed to protect you. Mm. So your brain will now do whatever it can to magnify the problem. Remember we talked about the spotlight effect? 
it'll start telling you all kinds of crazy stuff because it can't figure out contextually what the hell's going on. She's just making coffee, now her heart is racing and she's breathing really. Holy cow, maybe she is having a heart attack. Mm. A lot of people that have panic attacks say, I think I'm dying, oh my God, what's, what's happening? Wow. Or you'll see them do the deer in the headlights thing where they gotta get out of the room. That is the spotlight effect in your brain now taking control and magnifying everything to get you out of whatever it was. So here's how you use the five second rule. You use it to stabilize your thoughts before the panic escalates. And then what happens is it drifts into worry and then it disappears. Right. So the second you feel worry, you catch it, you train yourself to do that. If you start feeling yourself getting, you know, your heart racing, you can five, four, three, two, one and use the I'm excited, I'm excited. Um, if you, if that doesn't work, literally five, four, three, two, one, and just give yourself an anchor thought, literally, of you being okay. I'll give you another quick example, because this is one that we have a tremendous number of success with, and people that hear the example use it immediately and are blown away. I used to be terrified of flying, terrified. Every bump, I'd be freaking out, and, and so I started using this strategy with the plane. So the second that you feel yourself getting nervous, five, four, three, two, one, and then your anchor thought is a vision of what you're gonna do when you get to where you're going. So when I get on the plane tomorrow to fly back to Boston, I'll think about walking in the house and the, the place is like a disaster. It'll look like everybody's stuff got loaded into a cannon and fired all over the you know, first floor. And so if we hit turbulence, five, four, three, two, one, I'll think about that vision because cognitively for my brain, if I'm walking in the house and it's a disaster, the plane made it. That's, That's the power of this. It's incredible. The question was, what do you do when you wake up in the morning and you're having a panic attack? It is something I lived with for years and it is this terrifying. This is new to me. It's terrifying. I'm so sorry this is happening to you. And I wanna tell you, you can actually get control of it. You ready? Yeah. So first things first, let me explain what's happening when your body is in a state of panic, okay? So that you understand what's going on. Have you ever been in a situation in your car where you almost get in an accident? Yes. And immediately <clears throat> when that car almost sideswipes you, what happens in your body? You just, you tense up, you have a, uh, instant, um, what's the word? Adrenaline. Yes, yeah. yes. Like your heart's racing, right? Yeah. And your palms get sweaty. In the situation I just gave you, your brain has context for what the f is going on. So your brain goes, oh my God, we almost just got hit by a car. As soon as the car leaves, your body starts to slow down, doesn't it? Right. What happens when you're having a panic attack is you wake up in the middle of the morning and your body's in a state of alert, just as if a car almost hit you. Okay. But the problem is your mind has no explanation for why it's happening. Yeah. Does that make sense? That's the hard part. Yes, so your mind gets really scared because your body is now doing something okay. that normally only happens when there's danger. But the problem, <laughs> but there's no danger but you don't know the difference. So you yeah. now wake up and I would get in this cycle where I would literally have panic attack after panic attack and then I'd be afraid of having a panic attack. Yeah. And then I'd have a panic attack. <laughs> so you're gonna do this. When you wake up and you feel that, do not lie in bed, stand up immediately, okay. start your day. Then as- Even if it's two o'clock in the morning? <laughs> if it's two o'clock in the morning, yes, because lying in bed with all of that and deep breathing, it's probably not gonna help. Okay. If you actually get up and physically move, your body now thinks, oh, she's getting away from the danger. Okay. What I want you to do is come up with an anchor thought. Thought, give me, give me a vid, tell, describe a place where you feel really happy and centered and grounded. I'm watching my grandkids. Great. You're gonna go five, four, three, two, one, and you're gonna have a particular vision of you and your grandchildren. Okay. Super specific. And then just say, I'm so excited to see them tomorrow. I'm so excited. I see to them see them every day. All right. I'm so excited to see them, them in the morning. I'm so excited. And what's gonna happen is by saying you're excited. Okay. And by counting backwards, five, four, three, two, one, you interrupt the patterns, right. you awaken.
see my babies. And then you've got a picture of them, your mind's gonna start to go, oh, her heart's racing because she's excited to see her babies. Okay. Just keep saying that. You've gotta give your mind an explanation right. to get it to calm your body down. Okay. In the car crash, <laughs> your mind knows what's happening. Yeah. You're gonna give it a reason. A lot of times, you know, people look at your, where you are now. And so they'll see me on television or they'll see that TED talk, or maybe you'll be in an audience of 20,000 people in, in the American Airlines Center and I'm on stage. And you're like, wow, that chick must have just been more incompetent. I hate her. <laughs> the fact is, uh, that's not at all how I how I was. I, I when when I was 19, I started having crazy panic attacks. Mm. And they got so bad that I took medication and medication was a godsend for me. I took Zoloft for two decades. When I had our first daughter, who is now 17 years old, the postpartum depression was so bad that um, they put me on Ativan, which turns you into a zombie. And I could not be left alone with her. So mm. when it comes to <clears throat> wow. self-doubt and to how we can torture ourselves with our thoughts, boy, have I lived that nightmare. And as I started to use the five second rule, everything about my life changed because when people first learn the rule, what you're going to learn, what you're going to start doing is you're going to start using the rule to push yourself to do things that are annoying. You're going to push yourself to get up on time. You're going to push yourself to work on your business plan. You're going to push yourself to make calls that are scary. You're going to mm. push yourself to get to the gym. You're going to push yourself to speak up more at work. You're going to push yourself to put the booze down. Behavioral, behavioral, behavioral. And then you're going to start to actually use it to change the thinking patterns that are self-sabotaging. Mm. So mm. I, four years ago, wondered as I started to see myself go from fan facing bankruptcy to building a figure biggest. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, um, I, what, what, what happened for me is I started to say, okay, this is a really <clears throat> cool little trick to bring out the most powerful side of you, but can I use this to actually cure myself of anxiety? Mm. And the answer is yes, you can. And four years ago, I went off Zoloft and I started using the five second rule, which I'm going to explain in one second, to um, interrupt the patterns of worry and self-doubt, which, by the way, anxiety is nothing more than the habit of worrying spiraling out of control mm -hmm. and body feelings triggering now the habit of obsessive worrying that turns into anxiety and then kind of escalates to panic. Um, I started using the five second rule to interrupt my thoughts every time I would feel that kind of worry kick in. And because the prefrontal cortex is awakened when you use it, your mind is now ready to take on a totally different thought. It's a very different strategy than just trying to switch the channel on what you're thinking yeah. because you're actually inserting the step that nobody talks about, which is switching the gears in your mind so that your mind can actually take and believe the thinking. Hey, it's Mel. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed that video, by God, please subscribe because I don't want you to miss a thing. Thank you so much for being here. We've got so much amazing stuff coming. Thank you so much for sending this stuff to your friends and your family. I love you. We create these videos for you. So make sure you subscribe. Mwah.